are Locked On Texans, your daily Houston Texans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to a Monday edition of the Locked On Texan Podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked On Texans is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their prize picks projections, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com. Promo code locked on. Welcome to today's show. I'm John Hickman, joined by Cody Davis, here to discuss the 34 to 24 loss against Sunday. Davis Mills, 246, two TDs, two interceptions, sacked for a time, a QBR of 37.8, with a QB rating, <clears throat> a pass rating, excuse me, of 88.5. Davis Mills was 26 of 35 from the field. Damian Pierce, 14 carries, 131 yards with the longest play of the season for Houston on a 75-yard touchdown run, 9.4 yards per carry. Nico Collins led all receivers with 82 yards uh, through the air with on three catches. Brandon Cook, seven catches, 57 yards, 8.1 yards per carry. However, he did have a touchdown along with Rex Burkhead coming in at second with receptions. A third in receptions, excuse me, with five, 39 receiving yards and one TD uh, with the Houston Texans having Steven Nelson as the leader in tackles. A couple of important information from Sunday's loss. Third down efficiency continues to be a problem for the Houston Texans. They were only 4 of 12 on third down, 0 of 2 on four down. They had a total of 53 plays ran, a total of 46 yards, 6 yards per play, and overall, um, rough day for the offensive line. As I mentioned, Davis Mills was sacked four times with a loss of 31. Houston was very effective on the ground. Very good job in containing the Chargers. Did not allow them to rush for over 100 yards. Contempt to 81 yards, the first of the season for the Houston Texans. And the Houston Texans had two turnovers, of course, the interceptions by Davis Mills. Nine penalties. Penalties hurt the Houston Texans throughout the uh, game. Nine penalties for 67 yards. Now, Cody, when we look at this game, Oh, oh, by the way, injuries to Blake Cashman. He did not return to the game. Uh, also injuries to Titus Howard and Derek Stingley. They finished the game. But I think the storyline for Houston, seven points in the first half, 178 yards, 17 points and 170 yards in the second half. With Nico Collins and Brandon Cooks being involved on a five-play, 93-yard drive, the Texans offense had some good some bad and some downright ugly and and unwatchable moments on Sunday. When the pressure was off and time in the pocket was given, Davis Mills looked the best he's been out there this entire season. The second half was the best football I've seen from Davis collectively from this offense. Um, and, and, Cody, I think we should start with what's happening throughout the game on offense. What happened, excuse me, throughout the game on offense that – was basically a tale of two halves for the Houston Texans. That the Texans are not a, a consistent team, plain and simple. And it's crazy because I want to say, with the exception of the game against the Denver Broncos, if I'm not mistaken, because uh, what they ended up losing like 16 to 9. So they didn't have an opportunity to score in the end zone. But you take a look at week one, you take a look at week three, games against the Indianapolis Colts and the game against the Chicago Bears. The Houston Texans on the offensive side of the ball, they did come out and they was playing fairly decent, decent and the one thing you and I talked about a lot here on this show over the past couple of weeks was the fact that they had a lot of in inabilities to sustain drives. And a lot of the times that they had that problem, it took place in the second half. Now, when you take a look at this game, they started off really, really slow. The very first quarter was by far one of the worst quarters that I've ever seen Davis Mills play. Um, I had an opportunity. Moments. It was unwatchable. I mean, I had an opportunity to count, or at least on my end, 
three times during the first quarter where Davis Mills overthrew his target. And one, which was the first interception that he threw, he overthrew Nico Collins and it ended up being an interception. And of course, the, the Los Angeles Chargers were able to capitalize on that turnover. But I say all that just to say, John, they struggled in the first half. And then in the second half, we saw a completely different team. As we enter week five of the regular season, John, listener, listeners and viewers, please let me know how you feel about this. I'm looking at this from a standpoint that, that this team on both sides of the ball, they do have some type of talent. But I don't know at this point, is it the coaching or is it the is it that the fit isn't there? Because it doesn't make sense for the fourth consecutive week. We are sitting here talking about, well, the offense played good in, in, in this quarter, but they look bad in this quarter. The defense played good in this half, but they play bad in this half. I don't know what's going on. Something inside that locker room isn't connecting because it doesn't make sense for how bad the Texans played on both sides of the ball in the first quarter. And then next thing you know, midway through the fourth quarter, they are within what? Six three. to three points. They they, they three. went into three. So I'm like, what is going on? Something isn't clicking inside that locker room. And John, listeners and viewers, I'm also looking at this from a standpoint. You're entering week five. You're zero, three, and one. Is it time to make some type of change? I'm not calling for a quarterback change or anything, but it's time for them to make some type of change because for another week in a row, we are sitting here looking at this game saying it's another missed opportunity for the Houston Texans. Yeah, and, and speaking of missed opportunities, no Rashawn Slater out there. And well, I'll get to the defense. But I, and I do think <laughs> there is I do think there is uh, maybe room for change, and I'll get to that on the other side of the ball. But I do want to mention that uh, Lovey Smith talked about a couple of I think good moments that we need to pull from Levy Smith's post-game press conference. Talked about Damian Pierce not being out on the field for the fourth and one call. And he said because it was a pass call, that's the reason why. Damian has has done some good things. We're not going to have him out there every play. Also, Levy Smith talked about being in those close games and continue with after four games. We can't talk about being close yet. We're not there yet. We're not a good football team yet. We haven't gotten over that hurdle. It was terrible. It was a terrible first half. And I think it was. Listen, when I look at the – offensive issues and struggles between the Houston Texans and why they're not able to consistently put points on the board because there was a stretch, nearly a nine-minute stretch for Houston where they put up 17 consecutive points, and that offense was moving with all type of fluidity, and and and, and it looked great, right? Davis Mills finally looked comfortable, and again, maybe because the pressure at that point was completely off. They wasn't going to move on from you. Saw Kyle Allen warming up on the field. But, you know, Davis Mills should continue to get these reps unless he is hurt or unless he goes out there and have a five-interception game where he just needs time away from the field. So I'm glad that they didn't rush Kyle Allen on the field. But I think it, when I look at what's going on right now, I just really think there is a groove between the quarterback and between the play caller that just hasn't been caught consistently. Now, I mentioned that nine, nearly nine-minute span but the first quarter and after they were not able to score anymore, these are some of the things that I saw. That I saw, and a lot of people want to know where where do you place the blame? I think Pep and Mills share blame, but it's 70-30 Mills. Now, the issue with Pep has been situational play. I'm going to immediately to the fourth and one call. No Damian Pierce out on the field. Uh, you're you're going side of Khalil Mack, who is a game wrecker on a bootleg. Now, and it's fourth and one. If Pierce is not on the field, Davis Mills still has a bigger body. He's a bigger body quarterback. QB sneak still working in the NFL, right? Um, that was one of those calls. The screen to Cooks after Pierce goes for eight, eight yards and he loses yards. Those are the moments throughout the, throughout the season so far, but also in this game where as a play caller, offensively you're scratching your head thinking to yourself, why would Pip do that? Now, the good, the Rex Burkhead TD, that was a great play call. If you saw that play, Rex Burkhead went the opposite direction of where the defense was flowing to to get wide open. That was a great play call. Uh, the screen call to uh, Rex Burkhead in the fourth quarter knew the defense was coming, had a good counter against the defensive 
aggressiveness. And I think Rex Burkhead had a great game on Sunday for the Houston Texans. Mills and Pep got together. Mills and Pep looked good together. The post to Nico, the 50-yard play. Great head fake by Nico Collins to kind of, you know, fake his corner in, his defender in, and he was able to make a play. And, guys, I want you to know how much Nico Collins has been wanting to make and have an opportunity to make that play. So they got some good rhythm in throughout that drive, but the issue is they have not been able to sustain it, and I do put 70% on that on Davis Mills. Right now, Mills is heavily overwhelmed. Has happy feet. He's overthrowing guys. He's, he's sticking with his first read or wh whoever he's locked in on, not accurate down the field, not push uh, progressing through reads. And I think, honestly, he was terrified of the pressure. But then those were my notes before the pressure was off. And then you, you were able to see Mills and Pep Hamilton and this offense led by Damian Pierce, who he will be the heart and soul of this while this offense scores. Because teams are going to have to start respecting Houston if he's able to keep running the ball 4.3, 4.5 yards per carry. They're going to have to start respecting that. And then that would have, uh, that would give Houston and Davis Mills an opportunity to expand a little bit offensively. So, um, and when I look at Mills, this is the first time he has been the guy with no out. Whether that had been injuries in college, whether that had been COVID, he hasn't been the undoubted QB1 since high school and i think that issue was starting to show as well offensively they had some good moments there was a nine minute stretch where houston played their best ball on both sides in the four games so far this year the issue has been the lack of being able to win these opportunities and i'll get to that defensively and for for offensively for houston mills not being able to calm down take what the defense gives him, and progress. He has regressed throughout this year, but he has shown some good moments. And I think Sunday's game for Davis Mills was a good game for people to understand they're not going to go away from him. At the very least, he's going to play 17 games this year. And he's going to have moments where he looks good. He looked good at, at points. And I mentioned, listen, Howard Moore, a couple of drop passes. Guys wasn't really helping him out when he was trying to help them out. That's the problem with this team. Just nobody is consistent all the time. And, and, and offensively, it showed. Today's episode of the Locked on Texan podcast is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. That simple. You pick two to five players. If they score more or less than the Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. I think it goes hand in hand, guys. This is a no-brainer. Locked on uh, is your promo code. Make sure that you visit pricepicks.com and use promo code locked on. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen, to this recap installment of Locked On Texans. And, John, let me just say that I was wrong. Going into this season, I was really excited to see what the Houston Texans can do on the defensive line. I really did believe that this would be a team that could stop the run. Um, and as a matter of fact, on Friday, I had an opportunity, of course, as you guys know, every Friday we have our friend, our brother, Mr. Brandon K. Scott from Sports Radio 610. And I, we was talking about the Houston Texans run defense. And I say, you know, maybe we put in too much, too much blame on the Texans defensive line and their inabilities to stop the run because, you know, the first game they did pretty good, but they collapsed in the fourth quarter, kind of the same way against the Denver Broncos. And of course, you know, everything just fell apart against the Chicago bears, but in a game against the Los Angeles Chargers, <laughs> the Houston Texans gave up. Yes. They gave up 80 yards on the ground to the Los Angeles Chargers, but at the same time, the fact that they allow Austin Eckler to record not one, but two rushing touchdowns. And not only that, they also allowed him to record 60 yards on the ground. And this is a guy prior to playing against the Houston Texans. His season high was 39. John, when I take a look at the struggles that the Houston Texans are going through on the defensive side of the ball, as Lovey, as Lovey Smith liked to say, 
it starts up front, and I have been so disappointed in the production that this defensive line unit has been given through the first four games of the regular season. Yeah, so earlier in the show you mentioned about change, and I was about to say something, but then I thought to myself, I'm going to wait. First, I do want to say that the front four, I think, played better than what – the interior guy players at least played better than what they have played um, – I think in the last – since the start of the season. One issue that I have, though, coming out of Sunday's game is you're absolutely right. The entire defensive line – and, again, I think Roy Lopez played a little bit better on Sunday. I think there was times where Malik Collins played a little bit better than what we've seen on Sunday. I can't wait to go back and watch some tape. But the Chargers had two rookies starting. That's Zion Johnson. Uh, Jamari A. Slayer and no Slater. And, and I'm looking around and I'm thinking to myself, where the hell is Jonathan Gennard? Hmm. Um, where is Rasheen Green? Where is Okonwanko, who, who hasn't had a good season so far? He's been the biggest disappointment. Um, you know, Jerry Hughes, he, he's top of the league in, in sacks, and I think he had – a couple of pressures on Sunday. Again, I can't wait to go back and watch it. But there is an issue there. You have two rookies on the opposite side of you, and Justin Herbert at times had so much time to throw the ball. Uh, that was the issue on Sunday. And another change that I think should really be discussed is two on the defensive side of the ball. Houston needs a defensive coordinator. Right? Uh, that was something that Lovey Smith, upon being hired, was taking pride in. And I think Houston needs a DC at this point. Um, and I also look at, like, when I say needs a DC, the miscommunication is there on the defensive side of the ball. I look at the Eckler touchdown. He was wide open twice. Mm -hmm. Same player, it looks like. You know, that's an issue, and they've had those miscommunication errors all season so far. And then that leads me to Miles Smith. I think there needs to be a coaching change. I don't know if you want to just, you know, maybe not now in the middle of the season. The season just started. However, his position group, the linebackers, have not looked good. They have had maybe the most communication errors among the entire team. It's shown week by week their miscommunication errors have caused Houston – you know, costly first down, third downs given up. Now that the team, the opposing team, is able to get a third, a first down now. Excuse me. Guys are getting left wide open, and that's been an issue with the linebackers. And, and it makes me wonder, Miles Smith, who is the son of Lovey Smith, is there a change needed? I will go with yes. I will go with yes. They have not looked better from last year. So far, there's been moments where they've been able to make a play because the play is filling to their lap. However, we're talking about that C word consistently. The linebackers have maybe consistently been the second worst group among the entire team uh, because they control more than what like we can say the receivers, but the receivers are dependent on the quarterback. The mm -hmm. linebackers are, for the most part, depending on themselves, and they have had issues. And so, again, I will go directly to Houston maybe needing to uh, love you. We need a defensive coordinator. We need a real defensive coordinator. Let you be a head coach, but you need a D.C. And I know it won't happen right now, but Miles Smith and, and moving on from him as, as a linebacker coach may need to happen at some point in the future as well. That's – I 100% agree with you. I do believe that they, knew, that they do need a defensive coordinator. However, you know they're not going to make that change in season. However, it is time for Lovey Smith to change up his defense, John, listeners and viewers, because – that Tampa 2 defense, the, 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 the zone that he loves so much, isn't cutting it, especially when you going up against a Los Angeles Chargers team who doesn't have Keeney Allen. But yet, Mike Williams lights you up for 120 yards on seven catches. You have not one, but two defensive backs who excels in man coverage. As a matter of fact, we saw – what Derek Stingley Jr. can actually do when you play to his strengths. Like, I do believe that Lovey Smith, because he is just so hell-bent on sticking to sticking to this Tampa 2 zone covers type of defense, 
he's not playing up to his player strength on that defensive side of the ball. I, I do want to say that a couple of things. Derek Singley on Sunday, nine targets, five catches, 46 yards given up. I think with Levy trying to play zone is trying to help out the other guys who right now athletically cannot stick with guys man to man, i.e. the linebacking group. Now, they they really want to get Christian Harris out on the field, right? Due to the injury of Blake Cashman, we saw um, a much more of Gary Wallow on, on Sunday as well. So they got some guys that they maybe want to get out there. It just hasn't happened, or they have to bring them along slowly due to injury. But I, between Kamu and and Christian Kirksey, zone is you know even though they they haven't been good in zone, zone may be more favorable to that matchup right now because man just isn't. The, the, the smarter decision and way to go. Um, and I think that makes sense. You don't want to, if, if there's a negative, you don't want to get a double negative. And if man is a, a, a huge negative, then teams know that they'll find out. And, and, and your linebacker is going to be barbecue chicken for lunch. If you haven't tried beer bar puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? They got a new flavor. You know, I love bringing the new flavor to you guys. This one is delicious. Indulging the cookie dough. The cookie dough is covered in 100% chocolate. Bill Bar has done it again. Allow me to reintroduce this cookie dough. My name is Cook. No, I'm just playing. But the cookie dough chunk puffs have a light, chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks. And, of course, like I said, covered in 100% chocolate. All of the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it. Plus, it's healthy for you. Cookie Dough Chunks Puffs are only 60 calories, and they have a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. Go to Build.com, use promo code LOCKEDON15, and get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKEDON15 for 15% off, uh, off Excuse me, at Build.com. Thanks for making Locked On Texans your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, the Peacock and Williamson NFL Show. Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson give you the expert NFL analysis in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. At the first London game of the year, uh, the mm. Vikings and Saints. Come on, bro. Pond, Why are you going to have to do me like this, dog? Oh, yeah. Miracle in the uh, – <laughs> I don't know what to call it, but uh, the bean pile in. I mean, not a bean pile. You know, you know the British love beans for breakfast. And it's weird. They like baked beans and eggs. Um, but we're back to the Houston Texans. And uh, I, you know what? I was I was impressed by this team. I, I know we're talking about some of the negatives. There were some positives, by the way. Like, I, I think this, this, this was an opportunity to, for Davis Mills, at the very least, take away your confidence that he showed throughout those nine minutes. Uh, another positive is undoubtedly the offense moves with Damian Pierce, which is hmm. what they and, and, and you know I think today was a good day for the offense and Pep Hamilton and Lovey Smith because in, in terms of that they have been trying to establish it. And on the opposite side of the ball, you had Tillery, you had Khalil Mack. This wasn't, you know, it wasn't like it was. They went hard on the other side. And so for them to actually come out there, run the ball as effective as they did, Damian Pierce, 9.4 yards per cap for, for pop, per pop, that was a good day. Getting Nico involved in and allowing him to make a big play was was good. And, I, and I, you know, I don't care what nobody says. Rex Burkhead played a damn good game on Sunday. Rex Burkhead was pivotal in two drives, the one to extend it on the screen pass and the touchdown. And so I think that's a positive to take away from. I know a lot of people, you know, are ready to move on from him. However, give credit where credit is due. He had a very good game on Sunday in his role, and I think that's a good takeaway. I mean, I'm not going to say damn good. I mean, it was decent. I didn't say damn good, but he scored (laughs) the fourth. That screen call, and for him to get out there at his age and the lack of athletic ability that we've talked about, that was a great dial-up call. Shout out to Pep Hamilton on that. Davis Mills did get happy feet, was able to deliver him the ball, got out to some space. I thought that in his role and what he was doing, how he was featured, let's be real, he had a good game. No, the biggest 
positive for me, and of course, it's probably for everybody, is um, Damian Pierce. But I'm not talking about his ability running the football. I mean, we all know he can do that. But what I love to see out of Damian Pierce, every single week, it's like he makes a goal on how he can get better. Um, week one, there was a lot of talk about his inability to in, in pass protection. And every single week since the first game of the season, we have seen Damian Pierce step up in his blocking. And of course, as we all know, last last um, Sunday and the loss against the Chicago Bears, he fumbled not once but twice. And when you go back and you have an opportunity to go back and watch that game, you could see how Damian Pierce is sort of like kind of changed up the way he is carrying the football to make sure he holds it um, tighter. And I love that because on Friday, we had an opportunity to talk to him to see what has he done differently throughout this week leading up to the game against the Los Angeles Chargers to make sure he don't continue dropping the football. And he said him and Danny Barry spent a lot of time throughout the week making sure that they practice ball security. And I just want to give kudos to Damian Pierce. I know everybody is loving him right now. First game with a hundred rushing yards, Um, you know, 75 yard touchdown run actually changed the whole entire atmosphere yes. for the Houston Texans. But I just love watching him improve at all of these small attributes. That's really going to make him one of the best players for this organization sooner rather than later. You got to be happy for Danny Barry, man. You he, like, you, mm. you got to really, you got to be happy. Finally got Danny. some talent to work got with somebody. <laughs> and, and I know that he probably loves just, being around uh, Damian, DP, and, and DP, vice versa, being around Danny is good. One thing that I do want to say, because we, we can't get caught up in, in, in missing certain things. And uh, Troy Harrison, man, what a oh, fine. Yes. Another positive. What a fine, undrafted, out of Central Michigan, switches positions from DN to fullback, beats out Andy Jonovich, who the Texans gave a, a, a good deal for a fullback to, early in the <laughs> offseason, beat out some vets, and is able to come in and play critical at fullback, like, you know, the, the touchdown run. Troy Harrison was all on that field, man, and, and popped out. Shout out to O.J. Howard for blocking down the field. Shout out to Nico and everybody for blocking down the field. So it was a couple of times throughout the game where, for me, I'm not comparing him. He's young in his career. I tweeted, the same success Arian Foster was able to have with Vontae Lee's leading the way for him. I am I, I, I'm I'm curious to maybe start comparing it, just looking at the two with Harrison leading the way for Pierce, and he's able to get out there and make some moves, make a couple of guys miss, and pick up some extra yards. And I'm glad that you pointed out what Pierce was able to do as a blocker on uh, you know on Sunday. His key block led to the pass catch to Jordan Aikens, mm -hmm. which he was allowed to you know make a make a move, break a tackle, and pick up some extra yards. And so that is some of the things that. Out of your rookie running back, who I like that out of him coming out of college at the Senior Bowl, that's what you want to see on Sundays. And the transition from college to NFL has been slow, but it's starting to all come together for Damian Pierce and to, and to the point of Lovey Smith saying that Damian Pierce wasn't out there on a fourth to one play because it was a pass play. They don't want him out there every play. I agree with. Levy Smith on that. You do not want to tire him out. However, in a game that's that winnable and a player that does not have that much tread on his tires, speaking about the amount of carries that he's had in the last four years of, of his career, college career, career, excuse me, he got some fresh legs. He's a young buck. Put him out there. Fourth and one, he's been effective all day on the ground for you. Give your offensive chance to move the ball, and I would have liked to have him out there. Thank you guys for checking out today's episode of the Locked On Texan Podcast. Be sure to check us out throughout the week. We're going to look at whether or not the Houston Texans actually have a win coming up anytime <laughs> soon. And, of course, looking at film, breaking down what's going on with miscommunications, how the Houston Texans can get better, and di dissecting everything that is coming out after practices and post-conferences and everything as well. So make sure you follow us on Twitter at Locked On Texans and subscribe to the Locked On Texans YouTube page as well. And as always, I'm your host, Cody M. Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, that's Cody, C-O-T-Y-D-A-V-I-S underscore 24. John, really quick, this is the second time in four games we're sitting here thinking to ourselves, why isn't Damian Pierce 
in the game at the most crucial time. Remember against the Indianapolis Colts? Yeah, we, but until we, next time. We're going to get into that play call <laughs> this week for Pip. Exactly. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace.